welcome back. This is the second of the two videos that I'm basing on using and thinking about microwave ovens, how they work, what we can do with them, what we definitely shouldn't do with them. And we're into that latter camp now. If we look at how microwave ovens work uh, and what they work on in terms of heating up food and so on, we can very quickly see what it is that's going to cause us problems, I think, later on. So let's have a look at the science behind the things that we don't do with microwave ovens. Now, in the previous video, we looked at using a microwave oven uh, to estimate the speed of light. And we did fairly well. Uh, we got within 10%, which, given the crudity of the experiment, I'm quite happy with. What I want to look at now is how microwave ovens work, what they do. Um, in a conventional oven uh, we're generating heat through infrared. So we have filaments that heat up and give off uh, infrared radiation. So we get a combination then of um, uh, this radiation, this electromagnetic radiation uh, reaching our food and being absorbed. It's exactly the same sort of thing uh, as when you hold the back of your hand um, up near a radiator. You will feel um, the heat in the nerve endings in your skin. Uh, you're picking up infrared radiation in other words. Uh, plus of course the uh, elements will um, heat the air um, that's in contact with them. Uh, and that hot air will then, of course, spread uh, through the oven and um, uh, transfer heat to the food as well. So a conventional oven uh, is very happy working in that, in that sort of way. A microwave does something really quite different, profoundly different. Um, it's putting microwave radiation into food. Uh, so, you know, here's for the sake of argument, uh, some food. And we, by some means or another, are going to put microwaves um, into that food. Okay, how do they heat it up? Well, they heat it up because they have exactly the right sort of energy to move little groups of atoms around. Uh, and the classic one for a microwave oven uh, is the water molecule. Now, if we look at this uh, in a um, schematic way, uh, what we've got uh, is an atom of oxygen um, that's connected to, through chemical bonds, um, two atoms of hydrogen. OK, um, and microwave frequencies are perfect for actually getting these molecules to tumble end over end, essentially. So rolling the, the whole molecule around. Um, in other words, the microwaves have been absorbed by the water molecule, which has turned it into motion. Uh, and then this water molecule will collide with other molecules in your food and transfer energy to those uh, and this essentially is a process of heating. So the more we jiggle around the atoms in our food uh, the higher its temperature. Um, so that's quite that's quite useful really um, but it's not only water that can have uh, this ability to absorb microwaves and convert it into motion therefore into heat energy. Uh, we have a lot of um, a lot of groups that include hydrogen, atomic groups, in uh, fats, for instance. So you'll find a lot of carbon in a fat that will be attached to one or more hydrogen atoms. Okay, and microwaves not only make water molecules tumble, but actually they can cause uh, motion in these groups as well. 
They can actually twist and bend and move them around. And that also is a form of heating. It's imparting energy uh, into our food. So that's great as far as it goes. Um, that's how microwaves heat up our food. But in this video, I was going to um, show you a few things that you don't do in a microwave oven. So some things, for instance, we don't want to heat up. We don't want the um, glass plate at the bottom of the microwave to absorb microwaves. We want that to stay cool, obviously. We want the bowls and the other containers that we put in a microwave to stay cool. We don't want those to pick up microwaves. So they're made of materials where there is nothing in them like these groups of atoms that could freely move around and therefore pick up and use the microwave energy. They're actually locked in to something that simply won't absorb the energy. Uh, but there are extremes that we can look at. So. One of the things we can look at, which is a little bit um, um, on the risky side, so I'm just going to make myself a little bit of space here. In fact, you could even talk about it in terms of creating uh, a bomb. There is a reason we don't put frozen food uh, in, uh, in our microwaves. Um, so here um, is our frozen chicken, for instance that we've put in the microwave, bad idea. Uh, what happens is that in, in this we have no um, free water to move around. Okay, it's all locked into ice. So there's no way that this can absorb the microwaves uh, that are being uh, pumped into it. OK. But there will be a little bit of fat in there. And although that's not going to absorb uh, heat energy very well, it will absorb a little bit of it. So there is some heating going on, just not much. But the issue is because the energy that's coming in is not being absorbed, uh, or at least not much of it's being absorbed, it's concentrating right in the middle there. It's getting through the outside uh, and everything is just getting really um, full of microwaves as it were in the middle. So as soon as we get the tiniest bit of melting here, we end up with three water molecules, movable water molecules, uh, and these things jiggling around we actually start absorbing all this microwave energy that's going through the frozen stuff uh, into this bit in the middle. So we start heating this up, heating this up, heating this up, and we've surrounded it still by a solid, cold um, remainder of our chicken. We've essentially created a bomb. Because once that starts turning to steam in there, the pressure will build up and then eventually um, something really nasty will happen. We'll destroy our microwave oven and hopefully only our microwave oven. So that's not a good thing to do. That's why we have particular defrost cycles on a microwave, um, which send in bursts of microwave, but allow a gap in between so that there's a chance of the stuff that melts in the middle then through conduction uh, to pass heat energy out through the rest of the frozen food that's in there. That's how the defrost cycle works. It actually puts in a bit of microwaves and then it stops for a while and waits uh, for the food to catch up, as it were. Um, there's a classic that I saw when I was um, working in the United States many years ago. Uh, I spent a little bit of time working over there uh, and it pretty much wrecked the corridor outside the group of offices that I was in. Uh, someone, and you know this was a science research institute, shouldn't have happened, but someone put um, a German sausage or something like a German sausage uh, inside the microwave oven, turned it on and of course it's covered in a skin 
It's not frozen in this case, but it's covered in the skin. Uh, so the stuff inside heated, uh, it gave off a lot of water vapour and again what we ended up with uh, was um, to all intents and purposes an exploding sausage. Uh, it blew the door of the microwave clean off. I think the worst thing however was the smell uh, of all this sausage that was then plastered over the walls of the corridor outside our offices. It took a wee while to clean that up. But we can go to the other extreme. What if we don't put in things that are uh, either frozen or um, enclosed in a skin like this, but we put in something that will be really good at absorbing microwave radiation. And there is nothing quite like a metal for absorbing electromagnetic radiation. So if we put something made of metal uh, inside our microwave, and the experiment that I'm uh, going to show you in a little minute actually used um, a CD, and a CD has a layer um, that includes a lot of metal. So it's got a thin metallic layer in it. Okay, and that should absorb uh, enormous amounts of microwave radiation. It'll heat up very, very quickly. And I'll show you in the video what happens. It's, um, it's a dramatic process. I should say that I did this uh, with um, plenty of air around me. My garage doors were open as I did this on the bench inside. Plenty of circulating air. Um, and it was an old microwave uh, that was really no good for anything else. Um, so it didn't really matter what happened to it. But this will illustrate, for instance, why you never ever put in uh, your fancy china with gold leaf on it, if you've got any of that stuff, uh, because you'll get the same sort of effect. And it's why you don't ever put a, um, uh, a metallic spoon or a fork or anything like that inside a microwave oven. Uh, this will teach us uh, why we don't do that at all. But let's see it in practice. Um, I think that's enough now of a lesson on why we don't put certain things in a microwave oven. See you next time. So this is why you don't put CDs in a microwave oven. Alternatively, it's a life hack how to dispose of confidential information. This is just an old bit of driver software for something I don't need anymore. So let's see what happens when we turn the microwave oven. I think that's pretty well disposed of. You can see why I did this uh, out in the open air. It's actually a rather mess, isn't it? That, I think, is securely disposed of.